in today's video we are going to bring it to your knowledge about one of the Nigeria's biggest and most current uh, internet sensation. This man is not just an ordinary internet uh, notice me kind of uh, person. We are talking about the most ambitious, probably the most powerful and the richest celebrity Dibia in this part of the world. <laughs> this guy I'm about to tell you people in Igbo, we used to say that Maduna in Ensobu, this guy he used to disturb. He disturbs a lot. He's everywhere. <laughs> so, after this intro, we're going down to the video. You are welcome to this new and exciting YouTube channel. Please be the first to subscribe to it. Why not click like on our Facebook page and let us know about your comments on our video. Please share this video. Ring the notification bell. Now, let's dive straight into our today's topic. Like I said before, this guy is a philanthropist by excellence. The word Dibia in Igbo language means native doctor or traditional medicine man or traditional medicine healer. This is not just an ordinary Dibia. He's a young man who has helped to transform this traditional noble art of combining herbs, roots and other materials to cure people's problems and to meet their spiritual needs. You know, this guy we are talking about is not only in this profession to re-engineer the narratives. He is here to rebrand, repackage, and remold this traditional medicine business. You see, he's everywhere. Today, the image of a pro profession that I once regarded or, you know, seen by many as dirty, evil, outdated, or primitive, sometimes that we see as something that is no longer compatible with the current religious realities in this new dispensation. You can see that it's no longer, it's like we see it as something that is no longer there because it's no longer raining. But the history, you know, of the transformation of this native doctor business cannot be complete in the whole entire southeastern Nigeria. Nigeria called Igbo land in particular and the whole states of the Federation of Nigeria in general without considering the impact and active participation of this young man named traditional Dr. Chukudozi Wango, who is popularly known as Akuo Warake. This Akuo Warake, although I know that there are some people who don't know him but his name is traditional Dr. Chukudoze Wangu. He is popularly known by all and sundry. His friends, his enemies, and the admirers, contemporaries, is known as Akwokoti Warake, meaning the chicken egg that broke the pan knot. As time progresses, I'm going to explain to you how he managed to make that his name. He was born on the 28th January 1998. That makes him perhaps 23 or 24 years. He was born in his, uh, in his Matana village in Oroku, but grew up in his native village in Umumpama. Umumpama is a village in Oba, a dimly south local government area. You know, he shares the same community with one of uh, Nigeria's famous billionaire hospitality business magnet. You know, the famous Obi Kubana that you knew now. And you know him. <laughs> you cannot tell me that you don't know. You've not heard of Obi Kubana before. So, he came from the same place with, it, uh, with this Akwa uh, Okoti Walake. Oba community is not far from the great commercial city of furniture in Anambra State. 
this aqua had a little stint in education it's not that uh, he's too educated he just had a little education at uh, a school called giant steps and the merchant of light school over there are clear indications that this great and famous dibia traditional doctor chuku one would not you know double into this native doctor's business by chance no he, he, he was not sent somewhere to go to go and learn the art of medicine making traditional medicine making no <laughs> he's into this for real you know so it was rather a gift that runs in the family between they inside their family between they so he's not a stranger to this business his father traditional dr henry Amobi Wangu, popularly known as Emily Maru Gowan of Aba, is also a confirmed uh, native doctor. He's also a great Dibia and a big herbalist. So Akwo Kotiwara King inherited this Dibia business from his father, who is still practicing till this day. The prayers of every parent is that they would want their children to be bigger, you know, better, greater than them someday. So that is so. That is exactly what happened in the life of this famous and powerful celebrity Dibia, traditional doctor Chukudose Wango. You know, <laughs> they say if your father taught you how to do something, whether good or bad, you, it will be easy for you to you know, download the scale. That one where your papa teach you directly. Is different from the one that they taught you at school. It's not the same thing, you know. So his exploits and impact has even made me to change me my very self to change my earlier own perception on the activities of uh, some people that I knew nothing about in their businesses. You know, without judging them, I must confess I've made a lot of. I've made a lot of judgments. I've ju made a lot of biased judgments on people like Agua and others in the past from an unreasonable distance. But today, I know better. I know better. Sometimes, if you see something make you bend down, look very well, know how that thing did before you begin to run your mouth up and down. Do you understand? So, I may not be an authority in this native doctor business, but in the past, I used to think that nothing good or positive could even come out from any native doctor anywhere. But that is not true. <laughs> Akwa still proved me wrong. <laughs> the Akwa Kotiwara Kinoba, traditional doctor, Chuku Wangu, has proved me wrong by the change. Vibe and positivity is representing. I've seen lives of many people changed by this great Dibia for good. The story of native doctors I used to hear about in the distant past is all about some dirty, fearful looking, you know, people walking in an untidy looking places, making only poisonous and diabolical charms for people to steal, kill and destroy. You know, and also forcefully that they normally take people's wives and properties. Sometimes you see them speaking to a non god or what I don't know. Maybe just to organize their own personal interest and pocket. <laughs> I can't remember seeing any one of them giving back to the society where they came from. I have never seen because I used to have some as my neighbors <laughs> at the village. So, but do you know that it will surprise you to see this video? He is the first native doctor in Nigeria to build a 150-kilometer road for his people in his community. He said he spent, you know, more than 500 million naira to complete this road construction project that he connected to a federal road for his people in Oba community, Anambra State. He also provided drinking water mounted street light and gave scholarship to some students in his community so that's his own way of uh, giving back to the society he has done so many things so many good things to people change people's lives 
in so many ways. No wonder more than 5,000 people used to work for this guy weekly just to patronize him, just to come for the solution of their various problems, maybe physical and uh, spiritual. And spiritual, I mean to say. Uh, there is something about this video. But just watch and listen. Is there any secret behind the success? Does it mean that there are some other sinister secrets or any other suspicious thing going on about his uh, Dibia business? That is a question. But anyways, the last time I checked, I can't remember any successful person or business without some closely kept secrets that is best known to them. I know if there is any, it is the edge he has over his business rivals and uh, contemporaries. It's normal. There's no way you can expose all your business secrets there. You know, you must have some, you must have something, you know, we're going to carry you. You say, if people look at you, they say, oh, you're different from the other one. So that's the issue. You know, his products, there are some of his traditional products, you know, some charms that a work or is usually known for. There is this one that uh, he calls uh, Okite. Okite, that is Okite means big pot. It is usually organized in a, in a one big pot like that with a lot of uh, all this uh, orishi rishi traditional um, something that I knew nothing about. <laughs> it is organized in a big pot, you know, and it is his job. It is his job. He knows how to do it. His job to be updating the, you know, updating the potency of the medicine monthly for smooth running. That is every month. The guy go the upgrade, he go to update your own pot that you have at his place. He'll be updating it. So, it's from that updating that will make the medicine to be, running, to be running smoothly, you see. So many people are so much interested in this particular one. I would say that this particular charm or medicine brings success and open doors in all your business endeavors in everything that you put your hand inside. You will be surprised to know that one of the biggest patronizers of these Sokite charms are some of our so-called uh, pastors or our God of men, I'm sorry, men of God. <laughs> Who is this it for miracles, signs and wonders in some of their churches and uh, ministries that is prayed Almost five in, a in a, five in every street in Nigeria. You see them here and there, scattered everywhere. I would say that they normally come to his place, and uh, that's, I mean these uh, pastors and these your so-called uh, men of God, that they usually come to his place under disguise. Sometimes they can wear hooded caps, you know, cover their faces and stuff. Sometimes they use this face mask to hide their faces so that you will not identify them easily. You know, so many people used to sit waiting for the guy in his compound. So these pastors wouldn't want them to recognize them. You understand? So he also made it very clear that his charms doesn't work for lazy people. So it means that it's not, if, if you are not interested to be up and doing in your business, if you are not interested to be, to be up and doing in everything, in anything you are doing, yeah, you don't have any business business with him because he's supposed to be hard working, and that is one of the requirements. That that is one of the things that will make the charm or the medicine to work. So this very okay, the charm alone brings in more than the sum of fifty million naira monthly for Awa, because it is usually recharged with the sum of one million naira monthly. As if you want to upgrade the ten. Made it in the work non stop <laughs> and no disappointment. So you have to be paying this guy one, one million naira every month 
for to update your medicine if you don't need any story so if you want big things to be happening in your churches or ministries or your other businesses you don't need to be told what to do <laughs> you know now so there's one that calls uh, Ijawele means success it's almost the same thing like uh, the Okite but I don't think that this Ijawele is uh, prepared in a, a big pot like Okite so it is also mostly used by businessmen for successes in their various business transactions and endeavor you know so it is also for favors you know for quick marketing of your goods and services you know just to make things to move a little bit faster and sharper you know now <laughs> there's, there's a particular one that used to trip me a lot do you know what that one is called <laughs> It is called Mugu Mospe. That is, anybody you call it Ekwe Ekwe. This is mostly the favorite of uh, all these uh, Yahoo Yahoo guys. You know, the work of this charm, according to Akwa Okotiwara in, in an interview, is just to trigger the maga, that is the white guy, to pay without any question. So this charm is also rechargeable monthly with a reasonable amount of uh, money that is best known to him. There's another one that he called pocket never dry or do I come here in Igbo language or Igbo charm. They do almost the same work just as the name implies. He said that this, he said that with this charm something reasonable will always be in your pocket come what may, come whatever the situation may turn to or may be. So there's another uh, uh, charm or medicine that they call the uh, ogon kucha, meaning fortification, a kind of fortification charm. So they say that uh, in Igbo language that unkucha awogojo, which means that <laughs> that unkucha is not a sign of fear, but it is done because of uh, should in case now you know <laughs> you know <laughs> so this very one is mostly used by politicians you know some hard men all these uh, rival guys and uh, some of uh, business competitors uh, you know this very one is mostly used by people who want to be up and doing who want to be prepared against any any uh, I don't know how to explain it against anything that might arise that they may not know so with these terms they were prepared for any unforeseen eventuality so it is used to fortify themselves the politicians, the competitors are mostly people interested in this kind of charm. You know, just to avoid the, you know, it's done just to avoid the unavoidable. You see that? So, anytime they are prepared. And when it comes to using native herbs and the roots and other materials to do the almost impossible, this celebrity Dibia. Akwoko Tiwarake, traditional Dr. Chukudo Zewangu, is equal to the task. He's up and doing. Although he has a lot of other medicines and charms and services at his disposal that I cannot have time to, you know, explain here. Uh, because uh, this is not a paid uh, video or paid advertisement. So I'm just working with what is current and what is going on on the social media space so i hope you understand that and one of the you know one of his mode of operation is that if you want a kotiwaraki to do any charm or medicine or any service for you you will have to give him some money to buy the items needed for the preparation of your charms or medicine or service or whatever then you will go with the charm after he might have pre finished preparing it you go with the charm you go and test the potency to see if it is working or not then if you are satisfied 
with the result, then you will come to show appreciation for a job well done. That's why you see around this compound, you see a lot of uh, exotic and powerful cars, fine buildings, good things around, you know, little there as if it is going out of fashion, you know. So if you go there, you see the kind of uh, 2021, 2022 smart model cars and beautiful houses and things, you'll be amazed. So he used to, he used to say that he's charms are not for lazy people he said that it's not for lazy people law so don't expect him to turn water into wine for you you must be up and doing you must be hard you must be a hard worker for his charms to work so now let me tell you why that name let me tell you the meaning of that name akwaoko that is the meaning of akwaoko akwaoko means you know, the chicken egg, you know chicken now, the egg that broke 22 pieces of pan knot. So at the age of 12, Akwa has already started making some bones spiritually, you know, and otherwise. So he can do fortune telling, you know, do so many other surprises, prepare a lot of charms, you know. So his name, Akwa Okotiwarake, is not a guy name. It's not a kind of name that one used to take or collect from a beer pal or, or something. No, it is a name given to him because of his magical and uh, medical, or they call it medicine-making competition he attended at the age of 13. So at that occasion, what was the biggest surprise of all the people that attended the occasion to the surprise of everyone this naive looking young boy then you know when it was his time they called him to come and do his own magic now as a one of the competitor so when it was his time to perform he asked for a chicken he asked for an egg just one and it was provided. He also asked for 22 pieces of palm kernel. You know palm kernel now. You know. So he used that egg. That particular. He used that egg that they brought for him. He used it. To break those 22 pieces of palm kernel. At that occasion. So that was what gave him. The name Akwaoko Tiwarake. So it was what took every other name that he has. It was not a joke. He used a and used an egg to he broke twenty two pieces of palm kernel. You know how hard palm kernels used to be, not palm nut, palm kernel. That kernel, that hard nut shell inside a, a palm knot. You're supposed to know what I'm talking about now. So that guy is is more than is more than a human being. So in his school days, you know, in one of his uh, biographical interviews with uh, uh, Nest King Celebrity TV. So in his school days, he, he used to be somehow a stubborn pupil. You know, <laughs> they used to call him 9-11. Do you know why? Do you know why they normally call him 9-11? Because this guy used to come to school by 9 a.m. in the morning and goes home by 11 a.m. every day. I mean, whether the school wants it or not, whether they like it or not, he, must, he comes to school by 9 a.m. and leaves by 11 a.m. So that was why... They started calling him 9-11. <laughs> Although he said that uh, he's not good, uh, that he's not good in many other subjects, but when it comes to mathematics, that they lost mathematics. So at, at such a tender age of 12, young Chuku Dozier Mwangu will just look at you and tell you immediately 
idea everything about you he will tell you everything about your tomorrow what is going to happen in your life or what is going through in your family or so many things that might surprise you although he's not good at uh, you know uh, class subjects but as he said that he usually used to be very surprised that he always has this uh, he, was, he always sees this third position in his class report cards despite his lack in reading and writing skills <laughs> he no shock you <laughs> he knows he no write anything for class but at the end of the semester you will see yourself in third position that is every end that is end of every semester you will always take the third position in the class which you know that he did not merit <laughs> because you know the kind of rubbish you wrote during the exam period <laughs> so it was later on that he understood that it was the handwork of the school head teacher and this school head teacher this school head teacher was a woman that he once helped so there was a solution he made possible for her this woman got married for you know like 10 or 11 years without any issue so when he knew about the powers of uh, one of his uh, pupil this uh, is what he so what Aqua did was to Aqua. What I'm saying is what won the heart of the school's head teacher on where Aqua is was because Aqua organized, you know, some herbs, some roots, and other materials. He used it to. He used it. He mixed it and gave this woman, and the fibro that was disturbing this woman was cured she became free so as a result this woman was this woman was able to give birth to two beautiful bouncing baby boys so while he was at school he first started making love portion you know this uh, love charms this touch and follow this touch and follow charms <laughs> for this local womanizers <laughs> this touch and follow charms and other portions in other chance so that was what started generating money for for him to the extent that even at his junior secondary school days he was able to post of more than six million naira in his bank account six million naira somebody who was struggling in jesus one and two is already having six million naira <laughs> <laughs> it's not easier because uh, that figure uh, is not a small money comparing you know somebody who is in a JSS one or two class it's not a small money so he has started making bones so a story about uh, what was told that while he was at school that people used to come. People they come find him for school. They used to come, you know, by patiently waiting. They, you know, they used to come. They will hang around the school gates. Around, around, they will hang around the school wall gates just to be waiting for him to come out from school to come and see to their, uh, their many kinds of uh, spiritual problems and other things, you know. They would just come. Imagine somebody who is still at school. People would just come and hang around the school gates, waiting for him to come out, to come and see them, or to come and attend to them. So when he comes out, he will usually refer them to his home for you know proper one-on-one -on -one consultation for the solution to their problems. You know, he had his first car. Although he got a, you know, he employed a driver to be taking him from home to school and back because then he was too young to drive it's not easy a class one class two student was able to buy a, a vehicle was able to buy a jeep for himself 
you know. So then he became a household name, which made his home a kind of spiritual mecca of a kind for those seeking many different types of spiritual solace on their problems. You see? So as he was growing up, he created this larger than life image. He created this persona and his popularity continues to grow in leaps and bounds. You see, he continues to grow. He becomes more stronger and powerful each and every passing day. It's not easy. It's not easy. This guy is too much. He is the youngest celebrity native doctor and probably the most powerful and richest in Nigeria. Little wonder a lot of people from different walks of life, people from all over the world used to come visit him as if a poor Kotiwaraki is about to go out of fashion. He has made so much money from his, this is native doctor calling or native doctor business. This money I made from people seeking for his services in one way or the other. They are the people who made him rich. They are the people who are still making him rich. This guy owns uh, more than three standard multi-star hotels in Asaba, Delta State. And with many other expensive uh, boat landed and other big time properties in the Southeast. He's very rich. He said to be currently valued, valued at more than 100 billion naira. I don't know if it is true or not, but from what I'm seeing, from what is happening, uh, I don't think that this would be too far from the truth. So some time ago in his life, news about his exploits on solving people's problems started spreading like wildfire in the Hamatam period. You know, now this kind of news used to spread very fast. You know, everybody will be hearing about it. So people started trooping in in their numbers to see this great medicine man. They wanted to test and also to have a share of, you know, many of his uh, 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 medicines and services. You know, when people hear that there's somebody doing some great things, that they, 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 they would like to come and see. Even if you check in the Bible, when Solomon was was doing his own acting in the Bible. I think Queen of Sheba it was the person who said that I will go and look, check this guy out and see why he is said to be wise, to be this wise. So people started uh, visiting her while coming, trooping in. So he became well known. So this guy Awa is very good at giving to people. His, philanth his, his philanthropic gestures is second to none. He has empowered a lot of people financially in many other, you know, uncountable ways. Where will you start? Where do you start? A lot of lives has been changed as a result of his magnanimosity. He is one of the first people that donated the sum of one million naira during the time of uh, this famous and uh, this famous Igbo gospel singer, Chine Dumadike. You know, when he was battling for his dear life in the hospital for kidney problem. You know, this consultant, you know, these people who used to come and see, who used to come to see Aqua, I mean his patient, they used to call him daddy because of his powers. Aqua Okoti Waraki said that there is nothing that he doesn't believe in money ritual, which a lot of people are doubting. But it is from the horse's mouth. He said that he doesn't believe in money ritual. Easy. Even as I'm still speaking now, some people are still doubting about that. You that is watching me, some of you are still doubting about that. So, the rituals that we are talking about here is a kind of something that is raining. And a lot of people believe that this is exactly what that guy does for a living. It's true that it produces a lot of charms. Example, that hourly charms do not work for lazy people. He used to say it over and over and again. So some people used to, they try to demonize him. They try to demonize his uh, native doctor's profession. 
But what I'm saying is that those people doing that, you know, they have to, they need to have a rethink. They need to have a rethink. Today, people like a traditional doctor, Chuku Deze Wangwa, Kuokoti Warake Noba. If you see most of his uh, 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 car plate numbers, you will see something like address in the Oba. That is Oba people's address. You see something like a good in a boot. That is, there is money in the boot. <laughs> this guy, I just, in fact, I just don't know. So, he used to say that all the work that they are doing, or the work that he is doing, he knows how to do best is to combine herbs, roots, and uh, some other materials, you know, just to do whatever that he's doing, that he doesn't use any human body or any human parts to do anything. So he uses things like herb, roots, other materials, like uh, some animals, you know. So he says that's what he uses. So for a lot of people who are doubting about his source of, uh, I mean, the materials, where he, he sources the material that he uses to handle people's problem. So, you know, as a native doctor, this guy has tried his possible best to change the society that he met. He has been doing wonders. So as a native doctor, he has helped in bringing change to his community and beyond. He has brought a better life for many. He has helped in bringing in a lot of changes in his own community. And he has financed many others in their various businesses. I mean, son, you know, his people are known for trading. They, they, many of them used to do buying and selling. So he has, less, you know, he has helped a lot of people. He has so, uh, he also supported a lot of uh, gifted individuals like uh, uh, entertainers, some, sculpture, some sculpturers, you know, some musical artists, some painters. He, he, he do gave scholarships to needy students and also some business people. He has single-handedly built so many buildings for the widows and the downtrodden in his other community and Ambra State and, you know, beyond. This guy, this guy, I don't know, I don't know, this, they say he's a native doctor and he's doing this kind of uh, uh, charity and social works. It, it beats me, I must be frank to you, you know, it surprises me sometimes, you know. This guy used to give out cars, anyhow, he used to give out cars, he used to make car gifts. To so many people. He used to give cars as if it is going out of fashion. He has helped many people, you know, has many others to advance in their own handwork and uh, crafts. It was his art and popularity that earned him some of these titles like a god in a boot, meaning there is money in the boot, address in the oba, meaning the address of oba people, a meaning the chicken egg that broke the palm nuts and many other names that is being known for. You see, there was a time some rumor mongers went to town spreading, you know, unfounded rumors that Akwaoko Tiwarake, who is now officially married, they said that he cannot be able to father any child because of the dangerous nature of his job. But to prove all those wagging tongues wrong, in one of his videos, he displays some of his children before all. <laughs> you see some of his videos, you see some of his children, and they look exactly like him. You know, so he used to say that, he used to laugh, he used to laugh sometimes and say that, even that, uh, you know, he said that now his house will not be enough to contain all his children and their mothers. Do you understand? So, it's not easy, it's not easy, it's not easy. So, what we are doing here, what we did with this video is just to analyze about what we saw on the social media space. It is your own right to make your own decisions. So, do not forget, uh, my job 
is to bring it to your doorstep. My job is to inform you, to let you know about the recent event that is hanging around. Please do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Click like on my Facebook page. Let's see. I would like to see your comments about this video. Also, make sure you share this video to help the algorithms. Do not forget to ring the notification bell so as to enjoy more of our new coming contents. Please, let me inform you that I'm expecting to read from you. I want to know what you feel about this very video. Please, let's meet in my next video. Thank you. Do have a nice day. Bye-bye.